What's going on guys, Kurt here. I just built a homemade mini metal lathe. So I didn't even know that mini lathes even existed two months ago. But when I was looking at the lathe, I noticed the chuck and it said K11 100 chuck. So I thought, well, maybe I could buy a chuck and try to build one. So I searched around for the K11 100 chuck. It was about 50 USD. I paid about 70. A couple days later, I had a chuck sitting there. So I'm like, well, now I have to build a lathe. So I was gonna use old shaft pillow bearings, maybe weld a flange onto a shaft. So I'm walking through the junk pile and I see the three cylinder Suzuki head sitting right there. And I'm like, whoa. So maybe I could mount the chuck right to the pulley for the timing belt and use that as my, as my headstock for the, like for the bearings. And that's exactly what I did. And so I think it's unique. So I call it, a cylinder head lathe or short it up to a head lathe. I don't know if other people have done this before. So because I don't have any aluminum stock or blanks for the lathe, I'm gonna have to go over to the forge, try and melt down some aluminum. Fenced on down in the bottom. So I'm using a propane bottle. Of course, there was no gas in it and it was completely filled with water before I cut into it. It's only been a few minutes, chunks of water pump. these can be tensioned and it takes the play out. All right, guys, so this project, I'm not going to lie, it was very challenging. So I'm not an engineer or a machinist. I'm just a DIYer. So the entire lathe, except for the chuck, was built of scrap. So I cut out all the steel with an angle grinder. That was definitely not the way to go. Uh, if I had a chop saw, it would have been way better. I've cut out the steel for the tool piece and the other pieces. I just drew them out, cut them out. So I put the angle That's iron frame millimeter. together using... Um, just a tape measure, just measured across to see if it was true. And I just tacked it in the corners and that gave me the frame to start off with. So I added some quarter inch plate uh, to hold the head on top of the angle iron because the angle iron wasn't long enough. If the piece of angle iron were longer, then I could have just bolted it right to the angle iron. That would have been easier. So I ended up using the arc welder through a couple uh, thicker welds into the frame of the lathe or the ways, whatever you want to call it. So I put the carriage together, just tacked it together, put it on top of the angle iron, welded some nuts onto the carriage, and then I added the threaded rod 
so that it could move the carriage up and down. I greased it and I was able to get it to move. And then I started working on the cross slide. Cross slide, I'm just adding some, some pieces of angle iron so that my plate sits on top of it and then it can slide on top. And I put the lead screw through each end. So to get everything lined up and true, what I did was I put a shaft that I had, it was long, and I put that in the chuck. And then when I placed the head onto the lathe, I could then align the shaft along the bed of the lathe. So that was the trick. So I started drilling holes and everything with the drill press. So I got the drill press like for $50 years ago. I got the bench grinder as well for 50. So I used my little bench grinder, cleaned up the edges and tried to just make things a little more square. Unfortunately, with the angle grinder, um, you just can't get a perfect cut. A chop saw is what I need. I've been working on this for over a month. I've been off and on, off and on. Every time I go to use it, I have to add something else to it. So the majority of all the work went into the cross slide and the tool slide. So that was probably 80% of the work that went into building that. So I'd recommend just buying a cross slide. You can find them online. They're gonna cost you a little bit, mount it right to the ways of the lathe, and then I could just make it work right from there. So I haven't touched a lathe since high school, and I really had no idea what I was doing when I was putting this lathe together. So what is all the mini lathe made of? So of course, the special part of this lathe, I'm using a cylinder head as my headstock, and that holds my four inch K11 chuck on there. This actually works really well. I didn't have to put pillow bearings and make a shaft and all that stuff, which would have cost a lot more. This is where your timing belt would have went in your car. And I've just mounted the chuck right to the face of it. So of course the bearings in here are just plain bearings. They're pressurized with oil. So that could be a problem with this, but I'm, I'm lubricating, I'm putting oil and grease. So then we have our 24 volt lawnmower motor here. I've just put a motor controller inside of an old ATX, the casing of the power supply. We have our bed or the ways, whatever you wanna call it. I'm just using scrap angle iron. I have a piece of 5 8 threaded rod and that's attached to the carriage. That's just a piece of quarter inch steel that sort of is like a U shape that goes around the angle iron. And then on top of that, I've made my cross slide. So the cross slide moves in and out of your workpiece. I'm using a lead screw from a workbench, just like the one under here. So on top of the cross slide, then we have our tool slide. The tool slide has the tool post on top of it. So the tool slide moves this way across your work. You can turn it. So then you can go in on an angle. So then we have our tailstock. It's just a piece of a 3 16 plate, then a square piece of scrap welded on top, piece of pipe, and then strut shaft in here. And then I've welded a piece of pipe on here. And then the live center can just go right into there. Then we can just push the tailstock up into place, tighten these two bolts here, and then we can just turn it in with this piece of threaded rod. As I'm turning the threaded rod, it's moving towards the chuck. So because there was so much play and everything and it wasn't working properly, I had to add all these little screws. So I ordered the cemented carbide cutters. I found out after that these were not the way to go. I'll talk about that in a sec. I also ordered a carbide insert cutter. So I got this one here. So I figured I shouldn't even have bought these and I should have just went with the insert. So the insert tool I got for like maybe 10 bucks and then you can get these carbide inserts really, really cheap. Uh, so that was the better way to go. So when I went to use the lathe with the carbide cutters, I wasn't getting very good success. My question was answered immediately when I found a video. Carbide wasn't the way to go with a homemade lathe or a lathe with a lot of slop in it. So what I did was I took a grade 9.8 bolt that I had laying around. This is like a head bolt or a cradle bolt from a car and I ground an edge on it. So I was able to cut this down and it's pretty smooth using the 9.8 bolt. It's also made a boring tool and I was boring out this, this strut shaft here and it was hard as a rock. So it was like a little powder was coming out, but it was working. So if I use the live center and got this thing a little more rigid, then I might be able to use the carbine. So if the channel started growing, then I could invest into some better tools, maybe a chop saw or something like that. But for right now, I can't do that. I have to work with what I have. Wire mesh on top, hold up on this as you're pouring. Crazy, this. Oh, that thing go. Accelerate. The better generator you can get. 